Is this the most earnest bunch of self-important busybodies you've ever encountered? <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it in those terms, but it's certainly um, seemingly a group that use a different set of uh, language or a different lexicon than you and I would, I think. I, 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 I mean, just listening to you, the intro there and reminding myself of some of those catchphrases, um, you know, and, and what it really means, you know, because, of course, you can always tell this sort of language by what it doesn't say. And really, a lot of that, I think, is drawing back into this concept of stakeholder capitalism, which is this kind of basically reinvented way of talking about communism for the, for the 21st century. Um, and that's how the language finds itself. So um, having all of these different people from all of these different sectors, government, business, you know, private enterprise, whatever it might be, all converging on Davos doesn't sound like a bad idea in theory, but when you actually look at some of these policy positions, you, you know, you really have to start to wonder. Um, Agenda 2030, the sustainable um, goals pathway that they're looking at, all of this stuff just really doesn't sound right to me or you. And I, I think the language coming out of the WF is getting bolder and bolder. It's almost like, um, you know, with language like the Great Reset, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Uh, this concept of eating bugs, you know, like, I mean, this is stuff that's genuinely coming out of the WEF. So yeah, I'm really uncomfortable with that. And uh, and that was sort of the reason behind uh, trying to find out more. Well, there's, there's a lot of patronising aspects to the language too. I mean, that phrase, the dignity of every human being, I mean, that's a given, really. I mean, mm. what I want to know is who appointed these people and how do we know that they're not just forming cabals of self-interested, power-mad technocrats and oligarchs? Yeah, well, look, I mean, it was 1971, I think it was the, uh, the the starting date, and it seems to have been bubbling around for a long time, but from the outside, it looks like this, this sort of the fin has broken the surface a little bit with the WEF in the last few years. I mean, it, you know, it's something that I've always been aware of, but not something that I've paid great attention to. And I think the COVID period really started to, to highlight this because, of course, COVID became an opportunity for everyone to talk about what's next. And the WEF have said, well, this is the great reset, an opportunity for the, the world economy to do things a different way. Now, you know, in one sense, that might not be a, a bad thing, but, but you know, what the, the language that we're getting out of here is, is troublesome. And the fact that it is unelected, you know, I asked the question about who elected these people. Well, nobody. In the same way that nobody elected, you know, a, a bunch of NGOs. And, 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 you know, nothing's wrong with that on the surface. Um, but I think people want to know more. They want to know who's involved, what the agenda really is, uh, and, uh, and what sort of effect it's having on, uh, on parliaments like ours and others all across the world. Well, it, it's interesting you, you mentioned parliaments because I think the WEF is oblivious to one of the fundamentals of parliamentary democracy, and that is that our elected representatives serve us. They're not members of a powerful elite. They're elected to represent us in our parliament not hobnob with other elitists and technocrats in Switzerland. Alex, is this an old fashioned and naive perspective? Is it, is it actually inevitable in this global era that governments will join together in a spirit of cooperation? I hope it's not old fashioned to think that people are elected for the people, you know, politicians are elected for the people. But look, I mean, I, I probably do get accused of being too much of a knuckle dragger sometimes on some of these things, but I believe the institutions have served us really well. And um, the point you make about politicians being there to serve their constituencies, well, that should always be the case. Um, to a certain extent, I think the global economy does require a bit of extra thinking. Things are not the same as they were in 1950. That's that's fine. We, we all understand that. But the fundamentals have got to stay the same. It, it, we've got to know what the agenda is. And from where I sit, the agenda always has to be Australia first. And, you know, when you look at things from a globalist perspective, I think you could safely say that's not always the case. You know, people are looking at different different sets of policies for a globalist agenda. Um, whereas from where I sit, uh, you know, I just want to know what's good for this country.